Wow. Well, <clears throat> when I tell y'all that's my song, that's my phone. Okay, that's all I gotta say. Um, okay, so we are having a new moon in Gemini on May the 25th, and I am here to talk all about it. I am super excited. I randomly just was like, oh my god, I have to make a video. So here we go. Um, we are having a new moon, and basically a new moon is when the sun, here we go, got crystals here to help me, you know, um, we got the sun here, and we have the moon here, okay, um, and we need earth, my head will be earth, so I'm here, this is the sun shining, when, this is the full moon right now, right, um, because it's getting, you know, they're, they're opposite each other. But right now, the sun is shining. The moon, the sun and the moon are basically like energies are, are together right now. Um, and, you know, like this is the moon going around the earth. Um, and the earth is like rotating around the sun. Hopefully this is kind of making sense. I'm like, trying to illustrate this. Um, and so right now, the moon is right here. And so the energies are conjoined coming to earth which is my face the 10th of may we had the full moon in scorpio which was the energies here on the opposite sides of earth so we had the full moon you know opposing energies um but right now the new moon is going to be in gemini with the sun um and it's basically yeah, when the sun and the moon the moon is we can't see the moon because the sun is behind it you know what i'm saying go back to science okay um and so, um, basically what that does is it kind of, it's like a, a restart point of the cycle. Um, it's when, you know, the moon is at its lowest cycle, it's not seen, and the culmination point would be, of course, the full moon. And so since the 10th of May, the full moon has been, um, like, kind of falling, in falling motion, like, decreasing in size, um, and in energy as well, um, since... The full moon and so right now we're kind of in like a dark moon period right now i'm recording this on the 23rd um and so it's like right a dark moon in taurus right now we're kind of in um and it's right before the new moon the last little little bit of degrees before the new moon um where you have that refresh um so with the new moon first i want to mention i just i i um you don't want to start any projects yet because new moon, you, you have to kind of get to the zero point and then you can kind of start projects because it's not the energy you have, it's the least amount of energy. Um, and so you're not going to have that manifestation like you would almost before a full moon. Um, and so with this new moon being on Thursday, I would not really start anything, new projects, um, start a new project, unless it's internal work, unless the, with the moon, subconscious, their emotions, um, but any outward projects or anything, I wouldn't start until like Friday or Saturday, 26, 27, 28, um, into the month, um, because that'll be the start of the new cycle, the new 28 um, month, 28 days um, cycle. So, um, what else about it? It's going to be four degrees in Gemini, okay? Gemini is the third zodiac sign, um, and I'm going to, um, literally after this video, I'm going to be making the Gemini season video. Um, so watch this Gemini season video to know all about Gemini and what that means. And like, that'll it would definitely affect you knowing that video was going to help you so much about knowing what's going to happen with this new moon, basically. Um, I have Gemini moon, so I know so much about Gemini stuff because I really, Gem, Gemini, like crazy, crazy Gemini chart. I have so many planets in Gemini, so so much stuff going on in Gemini, so. I'll talk about that if you want to know in the Gemini season video um, as well. So, um, we're also going to cover Gemini season video. Um, it's going to be four degrees Gemini, and um, it's all about you know it's going to it's once again a new fresh start. And so um, we're going to be you want to think about removing things right now before that fresh start period. Um, it's going to be clearing things, clearing old energies, and clearing old fears and, and you know with gemini it's the first like mental sign in the zodiac and um, it represents our lower mind our thinking our communication short-term travel um kind of like you weighing options um the, the the daily thoughts we have in our head when we're pondering something that's all gen gemini ruled um and so we're going to be deep in our thoughts basically this new moon um and and 
you know, your 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 moon controls your thoughts as well. So that's you know we're really going to be deep in it. And it's Gemini season, and Mars is also in Gemini. No Mars, I think. Did Mars just go into Taurus? Mars may have gone into Taurus. I feel like Mars may have, but I forgot if it did or not. Hmm. We'll look at that. Anyways, um, so so much Gemini, Geminian energy, I think is how you say it. Um, and so that's Mercury ruled. That's Mercury. Look where Mercury is in your birth chart. Um, if you don't know, hit me up. I will look it up for you. I just need to know when you're born, um, where, um, and the year. Yeah, and the date, of course. Um, yeah, and we can figure that out. Um, get all your degrees. We'll know everything, but we'll know where Mercury is, and that's gonna. We'll be able to see kind of your that impact on your chart and know what's gonna be happening, because um, this new moon, especially, is even gonna be Mercury influence because Gemini is Mercury ruled. So, um, what else did I want to talk about before I get into each sign? Um. Yeah, new moons are all about clearing things. Like, literally, I've been, like, cleaning house. Um, me and my roommate have been cleaning house. And that's not coincidence that the new moon's coming out. Um, you know, I've also been, this is a good time to clear your thought pattern. To clear, <clears throat> ooh, frog voice. Clear your thought pat pattern. To clear um, old, old limiting beliefs, old um, fears, anything associated with your mind and communication, how you talk to people. Um, and especially with Gemini, what I really wanted to get into is Gemini is the first sign of two, um, and, and uh, like in the zodiac, it's the first sign that incorporates like Aries is about you know self, and and then Taurus is about values and and you know what what you manifest into the world. And with those two, that's happening with one person, but Gemini comes in, and that's you know the the twins, you know that that is. Gemini literally represents the, the the arms. It's ruled by the arms and the chest, which is for holding things, holding hands, giving hugs, communicating with people, you know, yeah. It also rules the hands and for, you know, information and using your hands. It's very um, Gemini. I have Gemini moon, so clearly I'm like, blah, 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 all the time with my hands. <laughs> all the time with my hands. Um, yeah, Gemini is the first, fastest one going around the sun, so everything is very, like, quick. So if you get new insights and everything, um, write them down. I have Gemini Moon, so I have to, like, I get random ideas all the time. And if I don't write them down, they're gone forever, and I lose them, and I can't, you know, it sucks. I forget things really fast because new things are coming in all the time. So, this is that's going to be happening to everyone. Everyone's going to be kind of feeling what I feel on this new moon. Uh-huh. Um, you're probably going to be pretty lit, too, because Gemini is going to do it. Um, I hate when, yeah, I hate when the brightness dims. But anyway, so, um, clearing old energies to bring in the new. What I really want to say is this is a time, finally the time, like, I feel like in 2017, we've been clearing all our new negative actions. We're not really dealing with people. We don't, we, who are not, you know, we, we learn our, we're learning our worth. We're not really dealing with people who, um, don't help with our, you know, don't like uplift us and, and don't, aren't with our higher, higher self where we're standing up for ourselves more and we're more confident in ourselves. And now one of the main issues is left is how do I communicate with these, you know, with people? How do I now, and I know, I know what I want and I know what I want to get and I know, and I respect myself. Now, how do I put these new boundaries and put these new, you know, um, what happens if someone step, you know, says something to me? How do I communicate with them without, with still being unconditionally, unconditionally loving, with still being helpful and not being, you know, rude? Um, but I still need to get my point across. That's kind of what this new Gemini moon is going to help with. Um, also, if you know you're trying to promote new actions, but your thought patterns are still negative or or self defeating, that's going to stop you, you know. And so this new Gemini moon is going to help with that as well. Um, and so what I also wanted to get into is there's polarity basically with that's a, that, that's going to be introduced and has been introduced recently with this Gemini season. I don't know if you noticed, but for me especially, I feel like there's been like a um, like mental choices or two realms I can really live in, and then the higher self realm or the kind of past self realm. Uh, my south node is in Gemini as well, so all my past self stuff, all my karma is being lit up right now, and I'm having to choose 
you know, which part of my past self do I want to take and which part do I want to live with my higher self that I've been developing. And so, you know, that's what's going to, we're all going to be dealing with. There's going to be choices between, you know, the twins, you know, the, 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 the if you know Gemini's, there's two signs. Um, and so that's what it is. It's that polarity that nothing can exist without an, an opposite, you know, um, an opposite energy because everything's energy. So, so, you know, light can't, we don't, wouldn't know what light is if they did, we didn't have dark, you know, and so contrast, you know what I mean? Um, and so we have to have that balance and, and all souls were androgynous and we're, we're literally in the point of balance. And so that's what our ultimate goal is, is to, you know, all of our opposite things to kind of bring them in alignment and then we kind of can work in a little bit of a flow, a little bit more of a flow. Like, 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 there we go. We can work in a nice, like, flow. If you get bored, you can always do that. That's what I do. I get bored. People also, people with Gemini moons who, um, you know, get <laughs> mentally bored or stuff like that and need stuff to constantly do with your hands or, um, yeah, I have Virgo ascendant, so lots of Mercury energy, so I have to constantly be thinking things or doing things in my hands and so that helps. It's kind of fun. Um, so I say that. Maybe there's a lot of Gemini's watching now, so in Virgo, so hopefully that helped you. Um, anyways, um, yeah, so lots of clearing happening. Next thing, I just wanted to mention us astrologically, we also have Venus, which is in Aries, 19 degrees. Gonna be squaring, which is kind of like a fight, a little bit challenging energy. Um, Pluto, retrograde, in Capricorn, 19 degrees. Yay. So basically, um, square just brings up challenges. It brings up, um, you know, kind of a little bit of tension, a little bit of, um, you know, you have to have more courage, um, a little bit of this or that kind of energy. And so with this square, it's, I got, there's a quote that I wanted to read short. All or nothing crisis over what you love or want. That's kind of what's going to be the focus with, on the same day as the new moon. So we now know what we want. We went through Aries season. Venus has been in Aries is teaching us what we value, what we love. Um, and now with Pluto, Pluto is about control and rebirth and, and transformation. And so we're going to be tested with what we love and, and this transformation and, and this control. You know, our, is, contro is, is, our, is someone controlling what you love? And, and is that going to be that balance? Or, you know, are you in control of what you love? And, and are you messing that up? So it's going to kind of be that kind of, um, yeah, debate, um, focus on what you want to initiate is what I wrote down. So like we also with Taurus season now want are into manifesting as well. So it's kind of like, you know, are you clearing things with the Pluto energy to, 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 to clearing space for your manifestations? Are they, are you manifesting really what you love and value you? Or, you know, maybe there'll be new manifestation options coming in. And you have to choose with the, you know, is it which, which twin, you know, is it going to be, I'm going to manifest some good stuff or am I going to manifest some past stuff, you know? And so it's about that as well. Um, I just like, so I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Last thing I wanted to mention is the super new moon. So super new moon means it's very close to earth and we get a lot of lunar energy. We also are going to have, it's, we've been basically having super new moons since like the eclipse in, in, in um, Virgo season back in September. And so let me just mention this is all not a coincidence, if you think it is. We have a super new moon. We've been having them. Um, we have another one also, again, in Cancer season next, or season, we in June. We're going to also, since September, the, the new moon doesn't always happen directly after the sun transitions into the sign of the new moon. That doesn't always happen. Like, literally later in the month, we're going to have, like, I don't know, like, um, the new moon in Sag is going to happen almost in Capricorn season. You know, at the end of Sagittarius season, not in the beginning. So literally since, like, almost Leo season of, of, of about this time last year, almost a full year we're going to have the sun and the moon, the new moon happening literally right after the sun goes into the sign. And the sun represents our heart, the moon represents our mind, and our thoughts and our emotions. So literally there's an alignment. We've been having this alignment in each sign since Leo. And that's an amazing um, thing. I literally, I was listening to um, Magic Mike um, on I Love Him. At, he's a Gemini as well. Um, and I love Gemini's. And he um, um, just also shout out to Love and Right. If, she, if she's watching this, she's a Gemini. And I like 
That's my girl. Because um, I just understand them because they speak to my mind because I have a Gemini moon. So I literally am like, damn, that makes sense, you know. Um, but Gemini moon also just, just got thrown off off track. Um, what was I talking? Oh, Magic Mike was saying on um, Astrolatus, I'm a love her as well. She's an Aquarius, Ascendant Aries. I love Aries. And I, I'm an Aquarius, so it's just I just I literally am following like my little crew. Um, and anyway, so she, on Astrolatus, she has these like weekly seminars, webinars, and that kind of things where all these different astrologers um, come and talk. And I'm literally basically training myself right now. As an astrologer, um, and will soon be getting my certification for astrology, so I can really just like stamp that off the bucket list um, and continue on my North Node Sag life to, to to teach this stuff, you know, because I love it. Um, so, Astrolata, watch her stuff, amazing. Um, Magic Mike was saying that this is amazing. He literally like realized that like this doesn't really happen that often, and it's super rare and it's super potent energy because the sun's a strong energy, and we have these super super moon new moon energy as well, <coughs> imprinting. And so it's literally like the sun just went to Gemini, so now our heart is into our communication. Our heart is thinking about. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, our heart like we're thinking about like um. You know, literally, we're thinking. We're thinking about things. We're, we're, it, we're, it's our our focus is on, you know, communication, socializing, maybe social media. If you have a new social media network, how are you going to bump that up? Or, you know, um, contacting new people or getting your name out there more. Or, you know, um, yeah. Um, third house also rules siblings, so connecting with your siblings and. Third house is also, um, you know, maybe traveling in your sh short-term travel. Um, you know, maybe you're trying to change up your commute or, you know, I literally just got, um, so I just had a ding in my head. Um, a couple days before Gemini season started, me and my roommate bought skateboards. So that's my new short-term travel. You know, I'm literally learning to just do that, and that's so much faster. Um, and so that's what I did. You know, not even thinking that, that literally just, you know, that's how things work. Um, it's beautiful. Um, what else, Gemini? Things with your hands. There are going to be any projects with your hands you could be starting during this new moon or um, in this season, you know, with the with the mind and the sun uniting. So it literally is just like taking off and it's been helping us get the energy of all these zodiac signs. We, I really feel like, you know, Taurus season was so strong. Aries season was so strong. We have these super strong energies because of this alignment every season. Um, yeah, and especially since 2016 was, you know, ending cycle, nine cycle, all that clearing of past karma. Now we're in this new place of, you know, initiation, new, new whole spiritual journeys and, you know, um, turn everybody's turning pages right now and, and, and starting new things and learning and, and we're clearing the old and so we need this new new energy boost you know um, do I have anything else to say about I feel like I got a good a good bit hopefully y'all got understood that um, about 20 minutes of new moon info um, so now what I wanted to do is just to give a little bit about where your new beginning is going to be. So new moons are all about new starts and fresh starts. So once again, don't start after, don't wait till the Friday or Saturday to, to really get it, but you're going to be having new insights basically in this area. Now I wanted to mention, it is very important that you watch this for your rising sign as well as your sun sign and your moon sign. If you have a strong moon sign, like I have a strong moon sign, so I usually watch Gemini stuff. Um, but my main thing I watch is Virgo stuff, not Aquarius, because I'm Virgo Ascendant, so my soul is here to grow in the area of Aquarius, I mean, of Virgo. I'm an Aquarius, I, I understand how to, you know, the Aquarian things, I understand um, that kind of stuff. Yeah, I'm still growing and maturing in that as well, but I, majority of my growth is in the Virgo aspects, and so I should listen to, and my birth chart is really oriented with the Virgo horoscope alignment, and so, yeah. I follow that more and then I go to my sun and then I go to my moon. So try things out and see what resonates more with you. Um, also, it really is about energy and just kind of um, if it resonates, literally. So 
hopefully this resonates for you, but check things out. So, new beginnings, new moon for Aries. Aries, this is your third house. Aries always represents the collective um, consciousness because they're the first house. So they 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 represent the whole the you know pop the the populace. Um, when when like right now, Gemini is the third house, so Aries is having their third house in Gemini. Aries have Aries risings have their third house in Gemini. Aries has their third that third house energy in Gemini um, because of that. And so Aries always represents the collective. So if you know Aries, it might remain Aries. Um, and so, however, she, whatever she's thinking usually is what the collective is thinking. How she's feeling this is what the collective is feeling. How the planets are affecting her usually is how the planets are affecting are affecting the collective. My my like daily cards usually really resonate with her because they're for the collective energy. So that's her. Um, third house, Gemini. Back to it. So third house is, you know, what I literally was talking about in this whole video with Gemini things. I keep seeing, I thought 19, 19, 21, 21. That's also very Gemini synchronicities. Um, synchronistic moments happen so much for me. And, you know, with this season, you're gonna, it's going to be happening as well for everybody. Yeah, super exciting. Um, it's going to pick up synchronistic, especially in the Gemini season. Geminis know all about synchronicities, all about timing. Um... Further marching on, Aries is going to be thinking about new, maybe promoting new social, themselves on social networking, maybe reconnecting um, with siblings, maybe um, hearing from new siblings in the Gemini season. Um, Aries might be going through just new thought patterns, new thought processes, um, you know, learning new things, um, communicating with new people. Um, you know, getting new guidance from people as well. Um, yeah, and sharing verbally in writing and um, maybe receiving healing words as well. Work. What I just did was so, like, like the channeling right now is so strong because I feel like it's in Gemini season and this new moon. So I literally was just word vomiting whatever I'm hearing from this left side energy, which is my spirit guide. I definitely feel is here right now. Um, giving me a little chat. And I have... My cell and I sitting right beside me, so it's you know, we're popping here with the amethyst as well. Um, and that was right there for you, Aries. So get lit, girl. Um, Taurus, second house. So, this is for this is literally what you rule, you rule the second house. Um, and so you're going to be thinking about this new moon starting new um, financial ventures, maybe you know, new financial plans, new budgeting projects. Um, new, <coughs> you're going to have it now, <laughs> maybe since tourist season just ended, you now have a new sense of value with yourself, a new refreshed sense of, you know, you just got your, you had your birthday. So you literally just had a, a restart of your season, you know, so your values are refreshed. Um, and so that's going to be your new focus, you know, where are you going to go with these new values? Um, oh, I want to also pull cards, crap. I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back. Aries, I'm so sorry, y'all. I got these cards, Kyle Gray's. Angel prayer or cards. I've had them for a while, but I am an Aquarius with fixed air, so I kind of get to get stuck using one thing. And I, I use my Rider Tarot and my and, um, um, my other Oracle card deck like so so much. I wanted to like keep switching it up. Um, and I also, since I don't use these, this deck as much, I have um, the book as well to kind of give us a little bit more of a, of a you know understanding. Um, so the cards are already shuffled. Um, and for Aries, <clears throat> excuse me, <laughs> the angels are asking you to honor your feelings, okay? This is Archangel Haniel. Thank you, Haniel, for supporting me as I honor my emotion. Okay, so Aries, you're going to be focusing on your feelings. You know? So maybe this, um, let me get to the page first before I keep talking and losing my thoughts. Maybe this third house situation in Aries for you guys, you're going to be really thinking about, um, you know, aligning your thoughts with your feelings. Um, so, general meaning, it just kind of says you're allowed to be emotional and it's completely natural to express your emotions, Aries. The angels are encouraging you to acknowledge how you feel and express that in a positive and loving way. You're a sensitive soul and probably more sensitive at this time, but this is great. When you express your emotions, you're expressing how much you care about a situation. And when you begin to acknowledge how you feel, you come into a deeper alignment with yourself. Your sensitivity is not a curse, but a gift from God. 
You are being encouraged to clear your emotions out by honoring how you feel and being honest with yourself. Taking a pause, the clearing. So it's new moon, you're clearing these feelings out. Um, you will then be able to express who you truly are and will come into alignment with the gifts and talents you have to share with the world. Or girls. So that is for Aries. Clear those emotions, Aries, and honor your feelings, okay? I love that. I really felt that. Taurus. Spiritual abundance, Taurus. See, this is about, you know, your abundance, your, your second house, your values, yeah? Um, thank you, angels, for blessing me with infinite abundance. So maybe it's also maybe not material abundance you're going to be getting, you know? It's, this, could, this could be, um, you know, abundance on all planes. Um, and so this is saying that angels want you to know that they are supporting you in all areas of your life, Taurus. Follow your spiritual guidance and intuitive feelings, and they will bring you abundance in all areas of your life. Abundance is your spiritual reward for trusting and sharing your gifts, talents, and light with the world. Any material needs you will you will be met at this time. Any material needs you have will be met at this time. There we go. And you are being encouraged to surrender any of your concerns in this area of your life to have <laughs> excuse me, to heaven. Allow the angels to take care of them for you. You are a being of abundance. You are abundant in light, energy, and love. And you are being encouraged to share this in every area of your life. Instead of asking what you need, ask yourself, how can I be of service? When you do so, you will align yourself with the universal life force, and it will take care of everything for you. There is a flow of support coming to you at this time, and those who dedicate themselves to service will receive the abundance of God and his angels. Beautiful. I just had a crazy deja vu moment there, so... um. Taurus, so that resonates, and I also am taking that note of that for myself um, because that definitely resonated with me as well. Um, and so now, Gemini's, this is going to be a super, super amazing new moon for you, especially if your your birthday falls basically from about now the twenty third of the recording to about the twenty seventh or twenty eighth. That energy you're gonna, you're really going to be feeling um, this new start. And all Gemini's, it, since this new moon is happening in your sign. This is going to, whatever is going to be hitting, you know, this focus is going to be hitting you for the full year. Um, and so it's your first house. This is your, you know, how you interact with people, how you feel you come off with people. You might be changing, you know, new ideas about your appearance, new ideas about um, how you see yourself in public, new ideas about um, your mentalities, your values, um, and how you're projecting that onto others or how that's projecting onto you. Um, your car, Gemini, loved one in heaven. Wow. Thank you, loved ones in heaven, for drawing close at this time. So, Gemini, your ancestors are near you right now. Um, your spirit guides are literally, like, on your shoulders, leading you right now into this new transformation you're going to be having. Oh, I cannot wait to read what this is going to say. Let's see. I love getting to learn this new book with you guys, this new deck. <clears throat> the angels are bringing through a loved one who was in heaven at this time. They want you to know that their energy and support are always with you. Your loved one in heaven is drawing extremely close to you and wants to help heal any remaining pain or feeling of separation that is within your heart. Take time to acknowledge and remember them, for this will allow you, will allow you to feel their love. The energy of a loved one wants to help you move forward in a loving and safe way. If there is someone on the other side whom you miss or have unfinished business with, this is your opportunity to make peace with them. Please know they are offering their love to help remove anything that's holding you back and are asking you to not feel guilty about anything at all. They have found an internal, eternal peace in heaven with the family who have gone on before them. Hmm. So Gemini, if you have some deep things going on, with your loved ones, you know, this is um, time for that healing and time for that, you know, that clearing and, and, and that, um, you know, that new motivation and, and, and you use this, you know, for, for your creative endeavors or for sharing. Um, talk to people. It's just a nice season, you know, get it out. And, and um, yeah, um, Cancer, this is your 12th house. So this is going to be a little less seen for Cancers because 12th house is unseen things. Um, I mean, honestly, with this moon, and since Cancer, your ruling sign is the moon, um, you're still going to feel it definitely, but more emotionally, more um, spiritually like that, something like that, you know, so your 12th house, it's hidden things, um, it's faraway travel, it is um, 
you know, I don't know why I'm thinking prisons, um, but maybe new beginnings there. Maybe cancers are getting out of prison or going in, or um, maybe some kind of internal mental prison with this Gemini season. Um, prison, prison in, in your job or some communication or something. It's two, two, two. Or, um, so follow your path, two, 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 with the, with the cancers, um, with this <coughs> 12th house. Um, it's also more spiritual, um, new beginnings, um, new growth with your, your guides or new, <coughs> excuse me, I'm so sorry. Bring it back. Okay. Um, yes. So it's, it's hitting up your 12th house cancer. So more spiritual things. Um, the miracle of forgiveness. That's definitely <coughs> so sorry, guys. but it's gonna have to happen because it is what it is. Um, there is um, <laughs> Pisces are all about the switch rules. Twelve house, twelve house are all about faith and forgiveness and compassion, and so honoring you that is gonna really be helping you. Um, this. New moon cancer. So the miracle of forgiveness. So this says in every challenging area of your life right now, there's an opportunity to forgive. Forgiveness is a deconditioning of the mind. Makes sense with Gemini season. It is a process that takes place when we let go of fear and choose to love instead. It is a miraculous procedure that breaks down the barricades that shut off our heart and soul from the most divine and abundant of experiences. Your guardian angels are encouraging you to choose forgiveness today as you deserve to experience only love in your life and on your spiritual journey. The angels know you can give yourself a hard time over past choices. They are shining their light of healing and support on you and encouraging you to forgive yourself and let go of any thoughts of regret or pain, unforgiving or resentful thoughts whether towards yourself or anyone else, just become a weight, a drain on your body and mind. Your angels are here to set you free from your past and remind you it doesn't exist. It is the present moment that is real. You are here now. Trust this and allow yourself to move forward. You are forgiven. Never forget it. Work. Cancer, that's you guys. Okay, Leos, we are, this is hitting up your 11th house, so that's your, you know, friend circles, maybe new social settings, um, new public seen um you know also new hopes and wishes new dreams are going to be starting um maybe meeting new friends um yeah 11th house things and this says love and accept yourself so maybe this is honestly becoming a friendship with more mental friendship with yourself how you see yourself in thoughts and how you um yeah how you're taking yourself you know what i mean love and accepting yourself so let's get to that, my Leos. And Leo, literally, um, you know, you, um, you guys rule the sun and the heart. And now we have this north node in Leo, and so it's all about loving ourselves and this courage and this new power. And so I'm sure, Leos, you're, you're being asked to even double your courage because you are Leo. So this is a major effect to you. Um, and double your love for yourself. Here we go, Leos. You are doing so well on changing your old habits and thoughts that the angels are now encouraging you to take the next steps along your pathway, which are to approve of yourself and then love who you truly are. You are a divine, perfect, loving, and lovable child of God, and it's time for you to look at yourself through these spiritual eyes. Take a moment to look back on your achievements and then wrap your arms around yourself and give yourself some well-deserved love work. Your self-esteem and confidence have taken blows of shock and trauma over the years and are no longer serving you. The angels want nothing more than for you to be at peace with your life, and they are here to help restore your faith and confidence in yourself. You have the magnificent ability to live a life of love. Take time today to realize that you are loved unconditionally by heaven and then, ask, and then take some steps towards loving yourself just the same. This is the key to opening up your good heart. And Leo's definitely have a good heart, so... Love yourself, girls. Moving to the Virgos. This is your 10th house, guys. So um, this is going to be, you know, your career, your 
um, public image, you're going to be thinking about how you're coming off with people, how you can promote yourself, how you can get recognition, your accolades, your achievements, that kind of thing. Unconditional love, guys. Okay, bring it to the table. This card is gorgeous. Yes. Um, and so let me read that for you. Unconditional love, the Divine Mother. You are blessed to receive the guidance and support of the Divine Mother at this time. Her nurturing and loving spirit fills your energy like a cup so that you can feel whole again. Together with her angels, she knows that, that at times you can feel unloved and find it difficult to share your love with others. She is here to help you see that it is just as blessed to give as to receive. You have given so much of yourself in life and love, now it's time to receive. You are never too old to be mothered, and the Divine Mother sends her blessings to you at this time, so that you can feel wrapped and secure in her love. You are being encouraged to love yourself and to see that you are deserving of love, so that the Divine Mother can work with your angels to bring healing and miracles into your life. You are a being of unconditional love. It's natural to love and be loved because it's who you are. There we go. <clears throat> So that is for my Virgos. It's all about, you know, bringing in unconditional love, um, loving yourself. So it's also, you know, thinking about with with this, it's going to be a little bit tricky, um, guys, you know, Virgos with this being in your 10th house because the North Node being in Leo is, is, is more promoting about promoting your creative endeavors and things that your heart loves. And so, you know, you want to make sure that you're not focusing on getting popular you know popularity or public acclaim or recognition just for the ego boost and just for the power of it if your heart's not in it you need to know not that your heart your heart will still be in it but you don't you want to make sure it's coming from a heart-based production or creative process um and not a place of of wanting more recognition because that would be a place of lack and not a place of unconditional love and abundance so make sure you definitely are focusing on that. Um, I just kind of read myself because that's what I'm kind of focusing on right now. So, yes. Um, Libra, so this is your ninth house, guys. So this is your Sag house. This is your, your beliefs. This is your higher learning. This is your higher knowledge. This is your higher um, thought process, your higher mind, your, your higher self. Um, this is your optimism, your expansion, where you want to grow. Um, <coughs> This is your spirit, <coughs> spiritual teachers, your guidance, um, foreign everything, you know, things that are not of your local setting. Um, yeah, so that's what's going to be, you're going to be focusing on this new moon, new ideas. Um, you got the Peaceful Warrior card, okay? So let me read you that. Well, if I can make this video through, my voice is slowly going away. 74, let's see. Peaceful warrior. The angels that want you to know that you are a warrior soul and that you, your heart is so pure and light-filled that you desire only peace for yourself and those around you. You may find your peace being challenged, however, and be unsure how to react. You are being called upon by Archangel Ariel and the angels to know that there is true strength in holding things together and sending everyone around you, especially the challengers, peaceful thoughts and blessings. You have a voice, and the angels know you're not afraid to use it. Take time right now to figure out the most peaceful and loving state of being you can remain in. If you feel that you have a reason to stand up to someone or something that is challenging you, your angels are here to say that you have the courage and the conviction to do so. But ensure you are coming from a positive space and aren't dropping down to the fear-based level you may be up against. Take time to ask yourself if you'd rather be happy and walk away or be right and prove a point. Will it have any benefit for the person or just your ego think peace and be peace so keep it calm libras um you are literally about peace and balance um your libras um but you don't want you want you want to keep that you know honor that in yourself and be that peaceful warrior yes um so now moving to scorpios scorpios this is your eighth house this is literally your you know yours your house um so new beginnings, little beginnings, new births, new um, deaths, ending situations, new transitions, um, 
power issue. So maybe this this Plutonian energy with the square with Venus. <coughs> Excuse me. You might have a big effect on your Scorpios um, with this eighth house. So your card is connect with music. Beautiful. And literally, I was having this conversation with my sister, and um, she's Scorpio, about how Scorpios produce and how Scorpios create. And I'm like, I have so much air energy. I'm always talking and sharing, and that's a good way for me to share and create um, or writing things or visual. Thing, you know, that's helping me. But, you know, a lot of water signs are into music and the arts and poetry and expressing their way, their themselves in ways that are not so, um, of, even though music is, of course, of the senses, you hear it, it's deeper, it's more spiritual, you know what I mean? Um, and so, connect with music, Scorpio. So let me, let me hit you up with that description there. Okay. <clears throat> the angels are encouraging you to take time in your day to listen to music. Use it as a tool to help yourself relax and enjoy life. Music brings people together, and it's important to spend time with like-minded friends and loved ones in an environment where you can dance and have fun. Taking some time to do so, to do this allows your heart to open to the inspiration from the angels surrounding you. You're a beacon of light, and the angels want to help you connect with their guidance and inspiration. Listening to positive and uplifting music is so important for your spiritual growth. As you do so, your heart will open up and draw the angels close to you. They're desperate to dance at your side and make it happen. There are also messages coming to you through lyrics and music, so keep your ears open. If you're a musician, the angels want to be a part of your musical career, invite them in. Word. So really listen to music and really pay attention clearly to what they what it's saying because the messages are going to be coming through the music you're listening to, Scorpios. Work. Sag, this is all about your relationships and your one-to-one -one relationships with people because it's your seventh house, okay? Your marriages, your partnerships, your business partnerships, your um, close relationships, um, and you're going to be dealing with your inner power. So maybe, you know, with this seventh house um, Venus Libra energy and this Venus um, square happening um, with Pluto, all about power. You're going to be dealing with that. Okay, so you got that inner power. Let me read this for my Sag. <clears throat> okay, inner power. You are blessed to receive the support of the Universal Father today. You have the power within you to create your world, and you are being encouraged to see that this power is only in place when you are coming from a place, space of love. Release any toxic feelings and feel blessed knowing God is with you today. You are so powerful when you share your love with the world. You are being encouraged by God and his angels to be a powerful leader of love. There are two ways of accepting power. You can use it to instill fear and overpower others, or you can use it to guide and empower yourself and others. Lead by example and be the powerful, loving leader you desire to see in the world, you are powerful and filled with love. Beautiful. And this for Sag. Moving to Capricorn. This is your sixth house, guys. Um, so this is about your work environment. Um, new beginnings there at work. Um, new beginnings in your daily habits. New beginnings in your... Um, like your lifestyle. Um new beginnings and how you deal with people and come off to people. Um, new beginnings in your health, you know, maybe having some, um, been having health issues and, or you're starting a new health regime or something like that. Um, and so this is your um, six health guys. So Capricorns, you got the live your joy card. Beautiful. She's so cute. Let me get the, the blur out so you can see. Get it, girl. Okay. Live your joy. Your guardian angel is encouraging you to follow your heart at this time. Do what makes your heart sing. Do what makes you smile. Do what makes you dance and rejoice. Living your joy is so important. It is truly your only purpose here. If you're wondering what you're supposed to do with your life, this card is showing you that you are ch to choose the pathway that is filled with joy and happiness. That's all. It is the key to inner peace. If you find yourself sad and drained at the moment, take some time to do what makes you feel alive. 
whether it be a hobby or simply spending time with a loved one, you are being encouraged to do it now. Anything that makes you feel blessed, filled with energy, and alive is your joy, and today is the day to live your joy. When you do this, you will draw positive and loving experiences into your life that will wash away the darkness. Beautiful. Live your joy, Capricorn. Okay, now moving to Aquarius. This is your fifth house, guys. Um, and so this is about, you know, literally living your joy, um, you know, with your heart. This is a Leo house. Um, so really implementing this North Node Leo, um, you know, kind of mentality. Check out the North Node Leo video I did. Um, couple of, if I have a good week ago, um, for more info about that. Um, <clears throat> and in the fifth house, because it's North Node Leo. Um, and so you also may be, this is um, love affairs. So you might be, you know, rethinking that, new ideas there. This is um, your children, you know. So you might be having new ideas about how to better handle them or can better communicate with them or, um, you know, new thoughts about them since the Gemini season. Um, what else? This is your creative endeavors, your hobbies, um, mm -hmm, kind of your home life. Um, and so for Aquarius, you got the divine physician. Okay. So this home life, we're going to be figuring out how we can, you know, fix up our bodies and, and shine bright there. Um, let's see. Third so this says, your angels can see that you need a boost of light and energy at this time. Together with Archangel Raphael, they are filling your body, mind, and soul with healing energy. So take some time out to take care for your whole being. Close your eyes and allow Archangel Raphael and the healing angels to place their hands upon you. You are blessed to receive this card today because healing is being brought to you on all levels. Accept it. Healing doesn't begin in the body. It begins in the mind and soul. It isn't your body that determines how you feel, but your mind that determines what state your body is in. Think healing positive thoughts at this time. And be grateful for what's good about your body and your health. As you recognize the health benefits you already have, more will be brought to you. You may well find that the healing angels are also here to help you heal your others. But in order to do this, you must ensure that you yourself are in good health. So heal within, then share what you've learned with the world. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So all about the mind. So, you know, Aquarius is going to be thinking, um, how can your... You change this Gemini season and Gemini New Moon, change your thought patterns so that they can influence positively your mind, you know, and, and I'm sorry, your mind, and then that, that way it's going to influence your body. Um, thinking more positively about, you know, your health, and that way, you know, and being grateful for your health and, and not really complaining about it as much, and that way, you know, more health, more great and abundance and health is going to come to you. That was hard to get out for some reason. <laughs> Pisces, um, lastly for the Pisces, this is your fourth house, guys. Um, so this is about your home environment. This is going to be your emotional security. Um, this is going to be, you know, your, um, you know, maybe dealing with your, your parents, your family, um, thinking about new ideas about, you know, your roots or maybe, you know, researching your ancestry or you could be, um, you know, thinking, having new ideas about, um, promoting your, your home environment or moving or growing in your home, decluttering your home, fourth house, you know, your card is Earth Angel, beautiful, beautiful card here. And this says, the angels are so grateful for all of your positive thoughts and the actions you do for others. They want you to take some time to see how amazing you are as a person. They are so blessed to have someone like you helping them do their work here on Earth. You are an angel of the Earth. Thank you. Instead of working out what you want next in your life, ask yourself these simple questions. How can I be of service? How can I first serve myself? And how can I extend my help to others? When you have the answers, know that they are guidance from your angels. They want you to be just like them, and by loving your life in a balanced way for yourself first and then for others, you will become a living, breathing angel. Beautiful, that's beautiful, my scenes. Lastly, I kind of wanted to give a card for the full collective, um, kind of the energy of the full collective. 
um, and that is spirit animal. Okay, I definitely feel like we're gonna have lots of spiritual energy with this new moon here. Um, let's hit that up. So let's see. Okay, angels are sending you love and blessings through the animals in your life. Whether you have a pet here on earth or a pet who has moved on to heaven, their loving blessings are surrounding you at this time. Take some time to connect with the animal kingdom and draw inspiration from it. The angels want you to know the animal kingdom holds messages of peace and harmony. For you, do anything you can to enjoy this. Animal consciousness surrounds you at this time and passes messages to you from your guardian angels. If you felt inspired to help the animal kingdom in any way, perhaps by becoming vegetarian or adopting a pet, the angels are encouraging you to follow this guidance. You not only have a guardian angel, but also a spirit animal who was with you at this time. Say the prayer on this card, then close your eyes and ask the spirit animal to show itself to you. Trust the first feeling or vision you have of this animal and connect with them through your spiritual practice. And so the card says, thank you, animal kingdom, for blessing my path with love. Um, so definitely, you know, I just saw, I definitely think my spirit animal is a fox. I always have seen, you know, I just see this little fox running around my neck and down my legs and stuff in my head. Um, and so I think he's here. You know, foxes are, are about quick wit and, and, and getting information and sending it out. I think that's what I need to be doing right now on this video. And so he's here with me right now helping out with the video. So tap into your spirit animal. I literally, the first time I did it, I did a meditation and I was so, you know, I kind of doubted it. A little bit, but I, you know, I did a meditation, a guided meditation about it, and um, it was so, it was an amazing experience. Like, it just asked me to clear my mind and really envision myself and then envision an animal, and the first thing I saw was a fox, and, and I have since, you know, and occasionally I'll see other things with it, a spider, I see spiders a good bit, and, or, you know, just different things, but the fox is pretty constant, so I think that's my spirit animal, um, and so check that out, guys, because you might be connecting with your spirit animal this new moon. Um, that's what I have for you guys. Keep in contact. I'm super excited that of everything that's been, been happening. I feel like I am, um, you know, with this process, this is definitely a call. You know, what, what part of what I'm here to do is help through tarot and astrology and, you know, intuition and kind of what I vibe with and what I feel will help you. Um, mediumship, just listening to what I feel like my angels and guides are telling me and like this to make this video. Um, and at 5252, I just looked at, so I'm gonna look up that angel number, see what that means. Um, and, yeah, so, exciting stuff. Um, stay in contact with me, guys, and much love.